One thing that really surprised me about YouTube is just how nice the internet can be. You hear of all kinds of horror stories, but honestly, the positivity on this channel really blew me away. You've asked lots of insightful and interesting questions over the last few months, so let's answer some of them. Are you planning to add ocean life to your simulation and to let some animals fish? Yes, aquatic life is on the to-do list, but it's quite a big update. I'll need to design a system that supports aquatic biomes. We're currently using the Whitaker Biome System to calculate biomes for each tile based on temperature and precipitation. This system is great, but it doesn't work for aquatic environments, so I'll need to find something new. Also, at the moment our simulation can only calculate rivers. This essentially works by picking a tile which is above sea level, picking a random edge tile, and then attempting to connect the dots. So anyway, I'll need to add some logic for lakes, oceans, swamps, and so on. The code for creatures should be pretty easy to adapt for life in water, but there are a few specific features I want to add which will require quite a bit of work. Like the next question, have you considered having a chance for animals to migrate across water by accident, like by raft or flood? I have not, but this is a great example of the type of granularity I'd like to get to. Have you ever played the game Niche? If so, what are your thoughts on it? The visual style of your simulation reminds me of it. I haven't played it, but I have seen a few videos. It's an interesting concept. Have you thought about adding specific adaptations like flying or burrowing? Yes, both of these are great ideas that offer interesting opportunities for complex behaviors. Flying, for example, can of course be used for travel, but it also offers a means for escape, hunting, and access to otherwise unreachable areas of the map for mating. Will there be a possibility for symbiosis? Nothing immediately planned for this one, but aspirationally, yes, it's something I'd like to implement. Opinion on cats? Love them. And dogs. And pigs. And snakes and spiders and pretty much anything that's not a mosquito. Flying bears? Go watch Casual Geographic and then come back and ask whether that's a good idea. What exactly is your profile picture? Its name is Frog. Full stop. What tools or programming language did you use to create your simulation? There are quite a few variations of this question asking about different aspects of my process, so I'll just go through a bunch of them. I start with the Unity game engine, which wasn't exactly built for this, but provides a pretty good framework for what I need. All of the software is written in C-sharp, but Unity also supports JavaScript if you know that language and want to have a go. I draw all of the creatures and plant assets in an iPad using Procreate, and for 3D assets I use Blender, and I use a handful of other tools as necessary. I had a few variations of the question, how did you learn X? Which makes sense because, as you may know, I'm just some guy on the internet without a degree in any of these things. The simple answer is that I look for things that make learning easy and available wherever I am. Which brings me to my first sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is my new favorite tool for learning about complicated topics like math, science, and computer science. It's easy to use, interactive, and has thousands of lessons from basics to advanced topics with new lessons added every month. Brilliant customizes content to fit your needs and lets you learn at your own pace. I'm using Brilliant right now to brush up on math I haven't studied since high school and to improve my understanding of neural networks which I'm planning to use for intelligence in our simulation. Most importantly for me, the lessons come with me and can be completed in just a few minutes, whether I'm on a train, waiting in line, or would otherwise be scrolling through social media. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash 8littlebears or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Now back to your questions. How are creatures calculated? Creatures are basically just buckets of data which have no inherent visualization. So the simulation assigns an avatar whenever they're born, based on a list of stats I keep in a CSV. The avatar then moves around with that bucket of data throughout its life. How long is a turn? Turns don't really correspond with any real-world timings. I did think about making them correspond with something like 6-hour units, but given that we're looking to make creatures evolve over just a few thousand turns, this didn't really make a lot of sense to me. What are the different areas slash map colors, and what do they mean? These represent different biomes and they correlate with the Whitaker biome system. They're essentially just a representation of temperature, water, and potential for life on a given tile. For context, this is the key for different colors. Can you explain a little more about energy usage? For the moment, creatures don't sleep, so energy is represented only in terms of food and water. Each turn, creatures' hunger and thirst will build towards a maximum value. This represents death by starvation and dehydration. The highest value is what creatures will prioritize in any given turn. The rate of increase for hunger and thirst is based on two factors, a creature's base metabolic rate and their level of activity, each of which is calculated using these equations. Have you tried longer simulations or larger maps? I've run a few test simulations on larger maps, but the problem is they just take more computing power than I have available. Changing the map from, say, 50 by 50 to 100 by 100 results in four times as many tiles. Each tile is running its own operations, and of course more tiles means more creatures, which are not only running their own operations, but also interacting with the tiles and each other. So it all builds up pretty quickly. Longer simulations are doable, and I'll be aiming to do this over the next few videos. The only downside is that they already take a really long time to run, and I only have one computer, which obviously means I can't develop the simulation whilst running a simulation. Is there any mechanic that lets the environment slowly change? Not yet, but this is on the to-do list. I want to implement seasonality as well as the impact of things like overgrazing, natural disasters, and other environmental things. Will there be behavioral evolution or neural networks? 
The current plan is for intelligence to be implemented using some form of neural network. What I'd like to have is essentially two parts. Instincts, which are passed down through generations, and behaviors, which are learned over an individual lifetime, and then potentially passed down by proxy through parental teaching or observation. This is a pretty big one, and I need to read up a bit more on implementing neural networks, so I think it'll be a little while down the line. Is this a game which can be played, and if so, how can I play it? The idea for this started as a game, and I still plan to make it into one. It isn't available yet, but I'm hoping to put some toy versions onto itch.io and maybe Steam for a small price. I'm not sure how I want to do this yet, so I'll probably release some polls to help figure things out. The goal for the final product was to have a multiplayer god sim with roguelike and deck building gameplay. But I don't know, we're a ways off. Anyway, thanks so much for helping me hit this milestone. And thanks to Clover Ring in particular for supporting me directly on Patreon. If anyone else wants to support me directly, there's a link in the description. Please feel free, but don't ever feel obligated. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.